right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to be covering part seven to the incredibly crazy story that I started covering in the summertime, which was titled, Man Leaves Cheating Wife in Hotel with Nothing, but that discovery was only the beginning. And as you guys all recall, because you guys that were following this story, and I'm sure many of you realize this story ain't over. Oh, no, no, no. As the saying goes, but wait, there's more. This is all about the guy who found out that his wife, who's a twin, beautiful blonde twin and a lawyer, that she and her twin sister have been playing this sick game for years where they switched around partners. So sometimes he was hooking up with his wife. Other times he was hooking up with her twin sister. And the, the sister was doing that to her husband, et cetera, et cetera, for years. And they have a whole history doing this to boyfriends and all that. They got a screwed up family that their mother treats her dad like crap, cheats on him. It's a freaking cluster, F-U-C-K. And I might add, it turns out that this dude telling the story, without knowing it, got the sister pregnant, and now she's having his kid, and it is a whole mess, as you all recall. And this guy is now writing in with an update to how things have been going. The story initially started, part one, two, and three was the end of July, and four, five, and six were in early August. They were actually really long stories, I just broke them up like I'm doing right now. And then you heard from the brother-in-law's perspective a little bit later on. And I'm going to continue on with this adventure. I don't need to say any more. And if you guys didn't see it, definitely go back and watch all the ones. I'll give you hours of entertainment here because this is crazy. And a lot of you guys thought that this was total BS. They created writing exercise or AI writing this or something like that. And I actually, as, as and I can see where you guys are coming from, but I actually don't think it is. I think it was just, things are just that screwed up in this world. And nevertheless, we have to share them here. So this is long, but uh, just a kick back and you'll see where things continue in this guy's adventure. So it starts off, he says, uh, hello SSM. Thank you for writing the story of the twin sisters, Ellie and Karen, and the husbands divorcing them, Ken and me. Uh, I'm, I'm Phil. I suppose you want to thank you for telling Ken's version of the story. Your commentary and the comments of the community convinced Ken he was wrong about me. Ken is the brother-in-law, the other the husband to the other to the sister and uh, believe this guy knew about this the whole time, which he did not. It's come to the realization that it was foolish to think that I was part of the twins game. That turned things around for him and me. He's also now uh, learned from personal experience that cheating wise never change. More to that later. Uh, no, they don't. A lot has happened in the past few weeks. There's also some news about Ellie and Karen's father trapped in a toxic marriage with her mother. The twins, the a-hole twins, the wives, they their mom is just as, <laughs> one can debate just as bad as they are. They learn from her. If you think the SSM community is still interested in our story and this update will be beneficial to the community, please feel free to use it. Oh, I'm sure the guys that will remember this story want to hear this. Both my father and Ken, avid SSM viewers, will see it. Well, welcome Ken and, and the father. Also, the twin's father is now watching SSM. As a short recap, I discovered my wife Ellie was having a long-term affair when I surprised her in Santa Fe. I left her in the hotel room with nothing but her bra. Yeah, we all love that part. I took her clothes, credit cards, money, keys, and ID and flew home. She managed to get home by boarding a plane using the driver's license of her identical twin sister, Karen. And that's a big no-no that all the different federal agencies will come down on her like a ton of blick, blicks, bricks for... Ellie and Karen used to switch boyfriends for SCX in high school and college without the boyfriend's knowledge. They also did this with their husbands, Ken and me, through our marriages and without our knowledge. I finally got Ellie to agree to a fair divorce settlement and move out of our house by threatening to expose her affair with a married co-worker. That's a, that's a firing offense at the law firm where she works as an attorney. Ellie and I have no children, so once she agrees to the terms, our divorce should be simple. But Ellie always has her own plans, also more to that later. Of course she always does. She's a fucking snake. Ellie is clearly the dominant one of the, of the twin sisters. They're both a-holes, but Ellie's the bigger a-hole. Kenna's divorcing Karen, but they have a daughter and son. The daughter is my biological daughter. The result of the last time Karen and Ellie traded husbands. Karen loves the daughter and wants custody of her and his son. Ken also believed that I knew about Ellie and Karen's husband swapping, that I'm the father of his daughter, and his belief was that I was part of their game, have made things difficult between us. I'm gonna, I think we can all start chanting Jerry, Jerry, because this is the fucking sounds like Springer shit. Uh, this brings us to where Ken left off on our story. 
Ken and Karen are the easiest to update, so I'll start with them. Thanks for the feedback from SSM and the comments to his post. Ken finally came to the conclusion that I did not know about anything about Ellie and Karen swapping husbands. Well, it's about time, Ken. I get you're hurting, and I feel bad for you, my man, but... I was suckered just like him. He apologized to me we'd become somewhat of two of two man support through our divorces. We met for dinner every Thursday to talk. Sometimes my father would join us. Another husband of a cheating wife. I enjoy and look forward to our dinners. Our experience with our, with our twin wives' betrayals is, simil, is similar, <clears throat> so we understand much of what the other is going through. If it weren't for his writing to SSM and you're in the comments of your viewers calling him out, Ken would have still believed I knew about the twins games all along. You have no idea how glad I am that you were able to change his mind about that. Without you guys, it would not have happened. I'm grateful to you all. Thank you. It's my pleasure, man. It's my pleasure to you, Ken. And this is what we're here for. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I changed the channel around years ago from being all news articles to being personal stories. You guys sent me your stories. People enjoyed them. They found it as a way to help them. Hearing these stories gave guys confidence that they're not alone and gave them good ideas to turn their lives around. That's why I focus now on all the personal stories that you guys send in. I've asked Ken to bring his kids to the restaurant when we meet Thursdays. I want to have a relationship with my slash his daughter, but I'm also very fond of his son. Both great kids. Ken said he doesn't want me to have any relationship with his daughter until after the divorce. He wants custody, and that, that the daughter is not, not his may complicate him getting custody, especially if the biological father is hanging around. Fair enough. you got plenty of time to get to know your daughter, dude. He wants to tell the judge truthfully that there has been no contact between the daughter and me. That I'm not in her life at all. After his divorce, we can talk about a relationship between me and and my my slash his daughter. No problem. She's three years old. Right. She's playing with dolls and shit right now. You're fine. There's plenty of time to get to know her after he's divorced. I tell him if he needs me to testify at his divorce, just let me know when and where. Great. You guys are on the team helping each other out. That's what you need. Don't let those bitches divide you guys. Karen does not want a divorce and will do anything Ken asks of her, hoping for reconciliation. Yeah, fat chance, honey. I've had no contact with Karen, so what I know about her is what Ken told me. She got a job as a receptionist and moved from her parents to her own apartment. She is in counseling. She says she has had no contact with her mother or Ellie for almost two months. Okay, well, it's been a few months since we had the last update. She wants them out of her life. She told Ken she takes full responsibility for her behavior, but being with them is like someone who wants to stop drinking, but who continues to hang out with people who do nothing but drink. She feels they are poisonous for her and her children. She's also ended all contact with them. Well, that's nice and all, and I think she should not have anything to do with them because they are poison. But there's no way in hell Ken's giving her a second chance. There's no fucking way. Don't do it, Ken. No matter how much crying and carrying on and begging and pleading and promising you get don't do it she has remained in contact with her father she apologized to him for being a, such a bad daughter and told him that he should leave Karen's and Ellie's mother his wife he can stay with Karen at her place he'll have the bedroom she'll take the couch her father declined but Karen and her father see each other or talk at least once a week now Karen says she's never had a better relationship with her dad well you know what maybe they can uh, heal together but at the end of the day Karen and Ellie are being just like their mother, who has been hurting the father for years. So, and I don't want to hear any crying and carrying on. Well, it's the mother's fault, and that's they have no blame in this because the mother raised them with a bad example and blah, blah, blah. No. But then again, not, not here, not in this community. Ken told me at Thursday's dinner two weeks ago that he also contacted Karen and Ellie's father. Unlike me, Ken never uh, knew about the mother's cheating with the boyfriend. Uncle Fred, and with other men. Karen hid all that from him. He found out that when he watched SSM's post that I had sent. So while I never had any use for their father, Ken's relationship with him is very different. They have a lot in common professionally, and they developed a friendship. Ken now knows about all about his crazy family situation that Ellie and Karen grew up in. He decided to try to help their father. I think the guy definitely needs help, and it'd be great if, if we can all help the father out. You know, I mean, I, Lord knows how old he is at this point, but there's never too late to make a positive change in your life and cut out toxic a-holes. Ken knows more about the father's work and his professional background than I ever did. 
Their companies are not competitors, but in aligned fields. Ken said the information he got from his current employer is that the father is really good at what he does. Nothing but high praise from his bosses. When he called the father, Ken offered him a job at Ken's firm. Some pay better, same pay, better benefits, and doing work similar to what he's doing at his current job. There'd be good advancement opportunities for him and Ken. Unless it was criminal behavior, Ken told their father he didn't care about what he did in the past, but he wanted to know what it was. In the stories before, it would seem that the mother had some dirt on the on the girl's father here, the twin daughter's father. The mother had dirt on him, therefore was blackmailing him and hooking up with other dudes and cheating because if if he stopped her, she could let all this information out. Uh, he's sponsoring the father for a job, and Ken doesn't want the father's past to come back and bite him in the ass. So the father told Ken what happened, what his wife had on him, and here it is. When he first started working at his current company in 1990, the father was the last to leave work one night. He didn't check the outside door, he exited, and was actually locked. The company was robbed and some expensive equipment taken. There was an investigation to see if it was an inside job. Evidently, the robbers just checked all the doors of the companies on the block and got lucky with the door that the, the father had left unlocked. They were in and out in a few minutes, and they were never caught. The investigation couldn't prove it was the father who left the door unlocked or that it was an inside job. No cameras, not so much as a security system. They got expensive equipment, they don't have so much as a fucking security system. They also couldn't prove it was not the father and not an inside job. The father denied it was him. The father was very young, had a wife, and two very young daughters. He was afraid he'd be fired, so he lied. He lied to the police. He's taking His taking responsibility would have avoided the very expensive, time-consuming investigation that followed the robbery. But he just gotten the job and probably would have been fired. The more serious mistake the father made was discussing this with his wife, the twin's mother. She told him he had to lie to save his job. He was, no, he was a fool not to. If he lost his job because he came clean about what he did, she would take the kids and leave him. She would not stay married to an idiot who put some ethical concern about feeding his family. Okay, so he's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. If he, if he, if he lies, he protects his job, but then she's going to blackmail him forever, and if he tells the truth, she'll leave him. You know, in the long run, it would have been better if she left him. When the dust settled at work, his wife changed her tune. She told him about Uncle Fred and all her lovers. If he didn't agree to the open marriage she wanted, she would tell the company and the police not only that he left the door open, but he let the robbers in. That he was in on the robbery. Even if the company didn't believe he was a thief, he would be fired for not taking responsibility and lying. His employment record would be permanently tarnished, and the police would also not be happy that he lied to them. No, they wouldn't. The father told Ken it took years to get out from under the cloud of the robbery. But he worked hard and was promoted. But all these years later, he still heard snide remarks from some old-timers. Yeah, that shit's never going to go. I mean, we're talking the early 90s. We're talking like 30 years ago. Uh, even today, if they found out it was him, at, at the very least, his dishonesty would have permanently stalled his career and cost him his security clearance. He'd be demoted out, out, out of the work that he loves. So he has a security clearance, but back then he didn't have so much of as a freaking uh, Briggs Homes, Briggs Security or, or a, a, ADP or whatever the hell a security system is. I don't know if they existed back then <laughs> or cameras or anything. Clearly the company grew and got security after that fiasco. Eventually he would have let go. Too much salary for the work he'd be relegated to doing. He wouldn't risk losing his career he loves, so he stayed in a horrible marriage. He told him, uh, Ken told him that, that at Ken's firm, if his father wants to join it, the wife can, can tell whoever she wants that the father is a robber, he can't be prosecuted any longer, and Ken doesn't believe that the father has had any part in the robbery. Ken says the father was young and stupid for not being honest and taking responsibility. But he should not have to pay for the rest of his life for being young and stupid. And Ken told me the twins' father is really good at his job. It wasn't charity hiring the father. He was a good fit. Hey, Great. I think the dad could use a positive change. A lot of positive change the dad could use. Their fathers met with Ken last week to discuss the job. Meet the people he'll be working with and view the work environment. It looks like he'll take the job at Ken's firm. Ken gave him the link to SSM and told him to watch since it's required for required viewing of men with cheating wise. It will help him move on. Well, welcome, father of your a-hole twin daughters. <laughs> and I'm sure you are well aware of that. But you know what, father of them? You can, uh, it's never too late to make a change. And I think it's good you're getting out of that environment and divorce that harpy of a wife of yours who's been blackmailing you all these years 
and you can start fresh and be happy. And I wish that for you. The good life for Ellie and Karen's mother hopefully will be ending very soon. Think Uncle Fred will start will still want to still want her when she has none of her husband's money to spend on him. I can't imagine anyone wanting that hideous woman. Uh, just to finish with Ken and, and Karen, Karen sees her kids on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. The kids have overnight with Karen. She's always available to them at any time she's not working. She says she's been celibate since Ken found out about her cheating. Oh, okay. So for a couple months of her not having no SCX compared to years of doing doing Lord knows what with Lord knows who and Lord knows how many sausages. I don't think I think it's gonna take a lot more than two months. She says she's been celibate, blah blah blah. Her hope is that Ken will once again see her as the woman he loved and married. Forgive her and take her back. Um, the woman that he loved and married was not who she really who he thought she was. It was a front. It was bullshit. So come on here. Get over it, bitch. Ken says he moved, he's moved on from Karen. I think he's he's back talking with the co-worker he was dating, but he hasn't told me this. Anyway, he's proceeding with the divorce. My man, Ken, I know that probably the co-worker is giving you an escape from all the shit you've gone through, and nobody can blame you, but I would avoid any relationships, particularly with a co-worker, I might add. That's crazy. You don't want to jeopardize your career. Until the divorce is, is gone, you've done some serious healing. That's just what I think. What you do with that is your decision. Please not believe for a second that Karen has remained celibate. More to come there. I didn't think she was, but, you know. Now to Ellie and me. Oh, boy. We've agreed to do a divorce settlement where we split our checking and brokerage accounts down the middle. No alimony. With my father's help, I've already purchased half of her, our, our townhouse, and I pay for her half of the furniture. All that is done. All that's left is for the waiting period to end the divorce to finalize. Or for Ellie to make her move. Ellie always has a move. I've been waiting for her to come after me. That's just Ellie. You'll remember from Ken's update that uh, Ellie told Karen that she found out something from my mother that would be devastating to me. Ruin my life if it got out. My mother spilled the beans about me when she was drunk and alone with Ellie. Ellie told Karen that she was waiting to figure out what she wanted from the beginning before confronting me with the information that she had. And, of course, blackmailing me with it. Again, the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. Her mother's a blackmailer. Now Ellie's going to be a blackmailer. Ellie insisted we meet two weeks ago, a Wednesday morning at my attorney's office. She asked for us to talk in private. I agreed on my lawyer's advice. Then she lowered the boom. She wanted to remain in the marriage. She wanted a post-nup, which, in case of a future divorce, for any reason, she would get half of everything I owned. I would get nothing of hers. Okay. The post would stipulate that she has to agree to any future divorce. A divorce was solely up to her. After I inherited my father's computer company, if we divorced, she would get half. Okay, what dirt does she have on you, my man? When we were talking about a settlement before she moved out, she said she wanted the townhouse free and clear, and I refused. That made her angry. If we divorced in the future, the post would give her the townhouse free and clear. If she did decide to divorce, half of my income would go to her as alimony. Forever. In the meantime, we would live as a married couple on my income. The income she earned would go to her private bank account. It would never be touched. She smiled and said, don't worry about alimony. She wasn't going to divorce me. She told me we would have the perfect marriage. What a great deal. Are you fucking kidding me? Who the fuck would take this? And even if she would have dirt on you. I'd rather be living under a bridge. Warming my hands under a fire under a bridge. Eating garbage than to let someone like that have dirt on me. The perfect marriage is what she thinks her mother has. Lovers for her while I pay for all her fun. I asked her, why would I agree to remain married and sign such a post nup I wasn't crazy. Ellie's smile really broadened, excited by the news she was about to drop. If I didn't accept, her, uh, accept to her wishes, she'd ruin my life. I'd be like, um, you've done a pretty good job of ruining my, my life thus far, honey. My mother told her things about me that my father and I didn't know. If my father knew, he'd immediately disown me. No more father, no more job, no more inheritance. She was really beaming now. So your mother gave all this dirt to her. I may, maybe I've forgotten about, obviously, a bad relationship you have with your mother, but God Almighty, who the fuck's your mother? Carilla DeVille? That evil queen from Snow White? I asked what my mother told Ellie. She was 
so happy to tell me she could barely sit down. Bitch, get it out. Ellie said my mother told her that I'm not my father's biological son. Shocker. And that's terrible, if that's true. She paused to let that sink in. My father left my, mo my, father left my mother when he found out she was cheating on him. I was seven years old at the time. My father's affair went on... My mother's affair went on for nearly a decade before being discovered by my dad. Ella said my mother told her that my mother's lover, not my father, is my biological father. My father does not know. Ellie said, uh, I know what my father's like. He's not going to want someone else's kid around. She will tell my father unless, unless I do as she wants. Her smile was so big, I thought her face might break open. That's it. I mean, that's terrible. I'm sorry, man, if that's true. But seriously, that's what you're blackmailing me about? That, that's that's going to make you want me want to stay with you and accept those horrible terms? Let's just say his dad did say, that's it. I'm not going to have, you're not my son. He's still going to have the house. He's still going to have his career. He'll be, I, mean, he, I think he works for his dad. He'll, he'll do something else. Still. I asked how my mother knows my father is not my father. Ellie said my blood type is A, right? And I nodded. My mother told Ellie that her and my father's are blood type O. My father could not have, my, my father could not father a type A baby. Not possible. My parents had to provide my blood type when I started school. My, brother, my mother was never sure if my father was if I was my father's or, my, or her lover was my real father. But when she saw my blood type, my mother knew I could not be my father's son. She kept it a secret until she got drunk and decided to share with Ellie all the mistakes she made in life, including giving birth to her lover's son. Thanks, Mom. Again, Jerry. Jerry. I know all you guys are like, get the fuck out of here. Crazy shit in life, guys. I reminded Ellie that I have the ticket she used to get on the plane in Santa Fe. I'm more than willing to give it to the authorities. She'll be convicted of a crime, her days of being a lawyer will be over, and I also have a video of her telling her sister about her affair with a co-worker. That is a firing offense. I told her maybe both out of jobs, but unlike her, I won't be in jail. Ella said she looked at the case law regarding the ticket stuff. Given the circumstances, my imprisoning her in a hotel room and stealing her ID, the prosecutor and judge will be lenient. Well, isn't Ellie a master bullshitter? Ellie's an attorney and she likes to bullshit all the time. I'd say, okay, chance it. Go right ahead. She'll plead to a misdemeanor at where she may get fi a fine, maybe a probation, but no jail time. She may have her bar license suspended for a short time, but because it's a misdemeanor, she'll get her license back. Her law firm will certainly fire her, but eventually she'll be, pract she'll be back to practicing law. Now, of course, she's thought this through. She's not dumb. With the money I gave her for the townhouse and her savings, she'll be able to survive unemployment and still have enough to open her own practice. She'll be back to practicing law in no time. In the meantime, she could use an extended vacation. All this divorce stuff was getting in the way of her love life. Another happy smile. Okay. Then go ahead. Tell my dad. And I'll do this and you'll get your misdemeanor if you're lucky. You want to play hardball? Batter up, bitch. Ellie continued, I, on the other hand, don't have a profession. I'm at the mercy of my father. When he fires me, I'll have no place to go. When I sell a townhouse, I'll have to sell a townhouse. Much of that money will go to my father to pay off the, his loan to me. I'll be on the street with little money and lucky to get a job at a fast food restaurant. Get the fuck out of here. Ellie concluded by telling me that I'm the better off if she keeps her secret from my father. But to keep the secret, I'll have to do what she says so she can live the life that she wants. A perfect marriage like her parents. Huge smile again. You know, every time I picture her, for some reason I'm picturing the actress... Kristen Bell from that movie, that Hawaii movie, that funny fucking movie from 15 years ago, Saving Sarah Marshall. I know it's a rom-com, but it's funny. And I picture that bitchy little blonde in that movie, and I'm talking about Sarah, Sarah Marshall, and I'm picturing that, act. for whatever reason, I'm picturing her. I don't know why. I told her that her sister Karen is also liable for giving Ellie her driver's license for Ellie to buy the ticket. Aha. Uh -huh. Ellie said she'll take care of Karen. If they charge her, and they probably won't, Karen will also plead to a misdemeanor. So she's probably not going to. She's probably not going to lose her stupid receptionist job over this. And Ken's too good-hearted to not help Karen out if she needs him. And that, guys, is the end of this part, because this, this story is way too freaking long. So you'll hear the other part of this story. This is part seven, so you'll get part eight in a couple hours, because I'm not reading this for fifty freaking minutes here. So I'm gonna take a break. 
and we'll continue on with part eight later on. You'll get to see what are things continue on this adventure. I know I always leave it at cliffhangers, which you guys want to smack me about in the comments section. Fair enough. But uh, don't worry. A couple hours from now, we'll finish up this, this story, part eight, and see where things continue with his a-hole wife and everybody else in the story here. See you soon.